Is there a book by Trotsky in Stalin's library? I thought if there is a book by Trotsky in Stalin's library, that's interesting. And they, at first the archivist said, no, 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 there's nothing of the sort. And the next day they brought Trotsky's history of the Bolshevik Revolution. And we opened it, I and the other scholars, and all of a sudden on page one, all the bell going off. Because on page one you could see Stalin writing on it. Every line there was an annotation underlining at the and writing things in the margin like this is not true, this is not true, maybe this is true, but this is true, and so on and so forth, all the way through. And then at the tops of pages, he wrote lie, liar, betrayer, and then with his big blue pencil, you could, he would just cross out of the book <laughs> what Trotsky was saying. <laughs> so I thought, well. We're on to something here. We are on. Sound like a very rational man. <laughs> this, we are on to something yeah. here because Stalin kept no diary. He kept no journal. He had no no intimate friend to whom he confided his deepest thoughts. He had no lover to whom he uh, wrote love letters. We know nothing of this man as a person. Now we can see who he was in the of his own study at four o'clock when nobody is looking, we can see how his mind is working. Well, St Trotsky was his hated enemy. I might write the same thing in a book by my hated enemy. But he had the ability to book, you see. He wanted to know what his hated enemy was thinking, you see. So then I said, well, do you have State and Revolution of Lenin? And they brought out a whole bunch of Lenin things for me the next day. And sure enough, start opening these books up. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. They couldn't believe their eyes. Every page was written on. And the cover, the inside of the cover, the title page, all Alan's personal thoughts about Lenin. Uh, he, 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 and, and you would go along and, yes, with Trotsky, liar, lies, lie, betrayal, blah, blah, blah. But when he's reading Lenin, yes, he writes dictatorship, uh, so-and-so about the proletariat. But in other sections, he's reading. And in a very fine handwriting, he will mark a section. And in the margin, he wrote style. 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 You see, he's teaching himself how to write. He's teaching himself how to be a leader. He's teaching himself how to express himself by studying the master. Now, this is this I thought this is very. And then he will read five pages, and then at the top of page six, he'll summarize his ideas in bullet points: one, two, three, like a graduate student. Right. You see, this is no ordinary. Uh, mind at work here. This is who really and truly wanted to grasp the essentials of the system and, and understand what he was doing. He wanted to understand the premises of his own behavior. And you see, I don't think he ever truly understood them. But he understood them in a way that most of us do. Most of us aren't Socrates or Jesus Christ. Most of us go about our lives blind to most things because we are in a, 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 a way of thinking about the world and we don't want to have it overturned. So it, I, don't, I don't see Stalin as an exceptional case in that way. It was the world that he constructed, though, that was utterly rationalistic. One of the things that strikes me most when I read these uh, papers of his, he had no moral vocabulary. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, particularly for a Russian, I would think. Yes, no moral vocabulary. That is to say, he would never say, uh, he, would never, he would never criticize things on the basis that they were bad. He would never approve things on the basis that they were good. He would never use the word kind. He would never use any of those words that are in our moral vocabulary. If he wanted to denounce you, he would say you were an opportunist or a deviationist. <laughs> You say. A lot of people have said that. Yeah, <laughs> but he wouldn't denounce you on the grounds that you're, yeah. uh, you're a bad person yeah. because yeah. what you did broke a moral code. What you did broke a code of discipline of the party. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law. 
the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. Thank you.